Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to this shelter-in-place worship service from St. Peter's Lutheran Church for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, July 12, 2020. We gather as God's people to receive the blessings that God has promised and to thank and praise him for those blessings. We sing the opening hymn, number 523. O Word of God Incarnate. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
The Intro The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. As for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it and is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and strength and honor and blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation, blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lectionary The Old Testament reading for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost and the basis of our meditation for today is from Isaiah chapter 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but shall accomplish that for which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees and fields shall clap their hands. Instead of thorns shall come up cypress, instead of briars shall come up myrtle. And it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gradual Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom of the knowledge of God! How unsearchable are His judgments! How inscrutable His ways! For from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. To Him be glory forever. Amen. The Epistle reading is from Romans chapter 8. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The verse of the day. Alleluia! The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord! The same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea and great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprung up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. 
yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a little while. And when tribulations or persecutions arise on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown in good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing the hymn of the day, number 655. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Steadfast in your word, curb those who by deceit or sword would wrest the kingdom from your son and bring to not all he has done. Lord Jesus Christ, your power make known. For you are Lord of lords alone. Defend your holy church that we may sing your praise eternally. O comforter of priceless worth, send peace and unity on earth support us in our final strife and lead us out of death to life that which does give life Isaiah 55 10 through 13. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall accomplish that which I purpose. This is our text. Just as the water comes down and waters the earth, so does the word of God accomplish the Lord's purpose. The word of the Lord works. Not some of the time, but all of the time. It always accomplishes that which the Lord purposes. And it always succeeds in doing the thing for which the Lord sent it, even if we don't always understand what he's trying to accomplish. The word of the Lord works. Not some of the time, but all of the time. 
This is the promise given to us by God through the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah gives this promise to us in an image, so that the promise would be clear and we would be certain of the power and efficacy of the word of God. The image, of course, is that of rain and snow. It's of moisture that comes down from heaven and always waters the earth. Now the moisture doesn't always fall on the same place. But when moisture comes, moisture always works. Water never sits there, gliding on top the ground without sinking in. No, it comes down and it waters the earth. Even if it falls on soil that's saturated, it moves on until it finds soil that isn't saturated, and it waters that earth. The point is this, water always works. Not some of the time, but all of the time. It accomplishes the watering of the earth, and it always succeeds, making the soil bring forth and sprout with life. As it is with moisture, so it is with God's word. As moisture works all the time, so does the word of the Lord. That's the prophet's point. And boy, do we need the word of God to work. Like a dead, dry desert filled with thorns and thistles and badly in need of some rain or snow to come down and water the ground and give it life as soon as possible, too. If any place needed a little divine irrigation, it is this world filled up with the results of mankind's fall into sin. So it was, too, with the people of Israel, to whom the prophet Isaiah was speaking. Thirsty and hungry, with no money to buy food or drink, the people of Israel were helpless to help themselves. A vineyard that produced only stinking, rotten grapes on their own, Israel was unable to produce that which would please the Lord. Cursed by the fall into sin, we are now those who are conceived in sin, so that we come forth in iniquity, and are able to do no good thing, not one single thing that would be pleasing in God's sight. Our sinful spiritual condition is like the desert, dead and dry, badly in need of something to give us life. As we learn in the small catechism, we cannot, by our own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ our Lord or come to him. We are the ones who are powerless on our own to do any good thing. And so the Lord sends his word down from heaven to water the earth. He sends his Son, that is, the word of God incarnate, who takes on flesh and blood to come down and water the earth. And water the earth he does. The only begotten Son of God, who was not conceived in sin, but by the Holy Spirit, so that he might bring life and immortality to all. He came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Virgin Mary, and was made man. He who was in the beginning, the Word of God, who took on flesh, so that he could be crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, to die for us on the cross, to atone for our sins, thus watering the earth with his precious blood. When the Son of God hung on the cross, having suffered and died for our sins, his side was pierced, and the water and blood poured forth to water the earth. As the word of God incarnate, Jesus Christ, hung there on the cross, he certainly didn't appear to be powerful. He appeared to be defeated and powerless. So those who scoffed at him just confirmed their suspicions, while those who followed him were tempted to despair. The word of God appeared to be powerless. But then, in a glorious victory, like a sprout shooting forth from the ground, the crucified and dead Jesus is raised from the dead to burst forth from the ground alive and well. That which was sown perishable and in great weakness and dishonor, appearing to have no power at all over sin and death, 
is raised in glory and power and honor, immortal and imperishable, as the victorious word of God, whose death only served to conquer death, but whose life now serves to give life to the world. So where does the Lord continue to give this life-giving moisture today? I mean, the Lord Jesus has long since ascended to the right hand of the Father. From where does the heavenly moisture that gives life to this world continue to come? Where are we to look when we are dry and despairing, unable to help ourselves? Sure, like the rest of the world, we are unable by our own reason or strength to believe in Jesus Christ or come to him. Again, as the small catechism tells us, but the Holy Spirit has called us by the gospel. The Holy Spirit, through the preaching of the gospel, calls us out of the darkness of our sin to live in the light of the glory of God. The cross may be foolishness to those who continue on in their sin and death, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. The death and resurrection of Jesus on behalf of sinners is the good news in a desperate situation. It is the power of salvation for all who believe and for all who are destined to live victorious with Jesus in the land of the living. So, just as surely as Jesus himself came down from heaven to water the earth with his own blood, so now does the preaching of Jesus serve to deliver the benefits of his blood to those who through the working of the Holy Spirit hear and believe. Just as surely as the rain and snow come down from heaven and serve to water the soil for plants, so does the word of the cross and of the empty tomb serve to give life to the world. This is the promise given by God through the prophet. It is given for us to know and to trust so that we might be certain that the word of God will always work. No matter the setting, no matter how bleak the situation, the death and resurrection of Jesus reveals that the Word of God will accomplish His purposes and will succeed in bringing life to the world. This world is full of sin and death. The curse of the fall still hovers over us, causing us to be born in sin and to commit sin. We are all born sinful and unclean, and unable to do any good thing. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent forth his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who took on flesh to dwell among us. Though his death appeared to be the end, it has now become the source of life so that his glorious resurrection is the proof that he has overcome the curse and brought life and immortality to light. There is now no doubt. It is the word of the Lord that accomplishes the purposes of the Lord. Jesus Christ has succeeded in the thing for which he was sent. Now he continues to send his word down from heaven to water the earth, and, by his Holy Spirit, he uses his word to call, gather, enlighten, and sanctify the whole Christian church on earth, so that sinners would be saved and the dead, dry desert of this world would be filled with life. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto eternal life. Amen. Prayers of the Church Almighty God, hear the prayers of your people, grant to us all things needful and beneficial, and keep us from all things harmful. Holy Lord, mighty God, you are the strength of the hills and the hope of the ends of the earth. Give to our hearts your perfect peace, that we may not be anxious, 
nor live in fear, but rest all our hopes, dreams, and desires upon your merciful goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, mighty God, you sent forth water upon the earth, that it may bring forth abundant fruits and feed our bodies with all that we need. Help us to be wise and faithful in the use of the rich bounty of the earth, that the poor may be supplied, and that we may never fail to give thanks to you for all that you have given us for this body and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, mighty God, your word will not return to you empty, but will accomplish your purpose in sending it. By your Holy Spirit, make our hearts good soil for your word to be planted, that we may give evidence of a sturdy faith and show forth in our lives the good works that you have called us to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, mighty God, your spirit accompanied the witness of your people who speak your word before the world. Grant success to the missionary, the mission planter, and every pastor and church worker, that those who hear may believe, and those who believe may bear good fruit of faith in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, mighty Lord, you have given power to the nations, and those who govern to act for the good of your people. Bless our President, the Congress, our Governor, and all those elected and appointed to lead us, that justice may prevail and your people may be free to live at peace with all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, mighty Lord, you know how weak and frail we are Give to those afflicted in mind, body, or soul the fullness of your healing grace, that according to your will they may be restored to health. Hear us for all those suffering or recovering from the pandemic's ravages. For those who request our prayers, especially Brandon, Vitra, Rick, June, June, Judy, Cheryl, Aaron, Pastor Brian, Claire, Zachary, Pastor Jim, Pastor John, Maddie, Daniel, Terry, Michelle, John, Janet, and Paul. For the long-term homebound and those in nursing homes, Vitra, Rick, and June, and for those who we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who know the riches of God's blessings, that they would cheerfully return to the Lord the tithes and offerings of a grateful heart, and give generously to the many agencies of the church, working to help those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, mighty Lord, you have granted us great riches and gifts. Keep our hearts from being overburdened by the things of this mortal life, whether in time of plenty or in time of want, deliver us from persecution and sustain us from all tribulation, that our hearts may be fixed upon the true treasures of your grace. Accept the tithes and offerings we bring as part of our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving for all your goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In him, with him, and through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, both now and forevermore. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all things for which the Lord would have us ask, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
we sing the closing hymn number 577, Almighty God, your word is cast. shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing the long meter doxology number 805. Creatures here below, praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. A brief announcement about on-site worship services. After a lengthy discussion with Mike Boza, because of the heightened level of COVID-19 infections with more public exposure, we felt that it might be wise to cut back our planned on-site Sunday worship services to once a month to allow for Holy Communion. I'm planning on July 19th, August 23rd, and September 20th, etc., until the daily case increase rate declines. We will be using strict social distancing, mask at all times except pastor during liturgy, sermon, and the prayer of the church, two pews between family units, staggered pews across the center aisle, communion with enhanced social distancing as on March 21st, doors open during service for circulation, single-use worship folders rather than hymnals, and any other additional precautions that come to mind or are suggested before the service next Sunday. I am planning to post our live church services on YouTube for those who cannot attend live services, along with continuing to post 
shelter-in-place services for Sundays without on-site services, as well as a daily walk with pastor in the Bible daily devotions for everyone's devotional use. God bless and stay safe and healthy, Pastor Jonathan C. Winterfeld.